Hello, welcome to the DNA, RNA, and protein synthesis unit. This is lecture video number one for this particular unit. Um, I've included a picture um, with the title, and this picture is going to give you an overall view or an overall idea of what this chapter is about. So this chapter starts out, we're going to begin and we're going to define DNA, and we're going to talk about its structure and what it does generally. And then we're going to talk about our next lecture we're going to get into. We'll end up talking about RNA and how that stuff works. And then eventually towards the end of the unit, well, then we'll get into what's called protein synthesis. If you don't know what synthesis means, synthesis means production. So this unit is about DNA, which leads to these structures called RNA, which then leads to the production of protein. All right. This is chapter 10 um, in your textbook. All right, so let's talk about this picture. I'm going to give you an overall view of what we're eventually going to learn by the end of this unit. So this is where we're going to get to by the end of the unit. Now, this first lecture is going to keep it simple. It's just simply about DNA, all right? So let's talk about it. This is a nucleus. It's hard to tell, but this is the cell's nucleus, and these are little pores in the cell's nucleus, and they're pores in the nuclear membrane of the, of the nucleus. So inside of the nucleus, we have DNA. And within our DNA, we have genes, all right? And genes are codes or small sections of your DNA that are codes that will eventually lead to the production of a protein, all right? So genes are the codes for producing protein. Well, DNA is a large molecule. It's really big. It goes on for a while, and DNA is stuck inside of the nucleus. The problem that, that you, you can foresee is that DNA is the code for making protein, but that code is stuck inside of the nucleus. And the protein is produced at ribosomes outside of the nucleus, all right? So proteins are produced in ribosomes outside of the nucleus. What are proteins made out of? Amino acids. Those are the building blocks of proteins, all right? So the, the structure that builds protein, ribosomes outside of the nucleus, DNA stuck inside of the nucleus. So you kind of have a little problem. This code needs to get all the way out of the nucleus and to the ribosome. So how does it all work? Well, DNA um, can unravel, as you can see in this picture. And the code is these letters, these Gs, these Cs, these Ts, these As. Us are codes that are only found in RNA. Okay, so DNA, DNA is down here. There is no Us in the DNA. U's are found in RNA, all right? So what is DNA? DNA is the structure, are the codes. That's the code for making our proteins. The gene is a small section for making a particular protein. Well, what is RNA? There's different kinds of RNA. So there's RNA, mRNA here, tRNA. You can't see it, but ribosomes are made out of rRNA. So there's different kinds of RNA. Well, RNA is what we would call the working instructions of DNA. Well, what does that mean? RNA is smaller than DNA. It can it gets made, it's technically a copy of the DNA, and then the RNA now can leave the nucleus and then go to the ribosome and be converted into a protein. So RNA, the reason they call it the working instructions is they can leave the nucleus and go do some go do a particular job. So how does it all work? DNA gets unraveled, the code in the DNA gets converted into mRNA in this case mRNA now leaves the nucleus through those nuclear pores. The mRNA goes to a ribosome outside of the nucleus and outside of the nucleus at the ribosome, that mRNA is red. And as the mRNA is red, tRNA molecules move in and attach amino acids together. All right. So the tRNA carries these amino acids. They get attached together in the uh, ribosome. And eventually you have a growing chain of amino acids. This growing chain of amino acids eventually leads to what's called a protein, all right? So this is the job. DNA starts in the nucleus. This code makes its way all the way out here and turned into a protein. So that's why the production of protein is linked to the DNA. RNA is the working instructions of the DNA, which allows us to actually produce the protein. All right, so let's talk about DNA, all right? Well, DNA. What does it do? Well, we have in our bodies, we have in our body cells, we have 46 chromosomes. Um, 46 chromosomes are made out of DNA. That DNA contains our hereditary information, our genes. It is the code or the recipe for making proteins, like I just said in the previous slide. 
right? All cell activity is controlled by our DNA. So a gene is a small section of this gigantic chromosome. So, so the gene would be from there to there. And there could be multiple, if not hundreds of genes on a particular chromosome. Now, what is DNA made out of? Well, DNA is made out of these things called nucleotides, right? So DNA is structurally made out of um, nucleotides, and nucleotides also build up RNA, right? There's a slight difference in, the t in what the nucleotides look like in RNA, but they're, they're also called nucleotides. So DNA and RNA are both made out of nucleotides, but there's differences in their structures. DNA, we say, is double-stranded, which means it's made out of two chains or two strands of nucleotides. What is a nucleotide made out of? There's three things that make up a nucleotide. First thing you can say is the sugar. It's In this picture, it's here. In this picture, it's right there. All right? The second thing is a phosphate. The phosphate, there's the P for phosphorus. Phosphate is PO4, so there's the four oxygens attached to the phosphorus. In this picture, the phosphate is over here. Finally, the third part is called the nitrogen base. You may hear the term nitrogen carrying base, or sometimes we may just call them bases. Same thing. The base portion or nitrogen base portion of the DNA nucleotide is connected over here. Okay, this particular base on this example is called A or adenine. We generally give them a letter. Cytosine is called C, thymine, thymine is called T. Guanine is called G. These are the four types of bases. So there's one of four bases. There's four bases that can be created. Um, and these four bases can make the four different kinds of nucleotides. So four different kinds of nucleotides make up DNA. A's, C's, T's, and G's produce them. Who determined the shape of DNA? These two gentlemen by the name of James Watson and Francis Crick, and it was back in 1953. The reason this is amazing is we learned about Mendelian genetics, which started back in the you know late 1800s, and he came up with these great ideas of DNA, but we didn't even know what DNA was structurally at all. It wasn't until um, quite a few scientists around the world were working on the structure of DNA. Everyone at that time in the 50s knew whoever discovered DNA or what it looked like or what its structure was would probably get the Nobel Prize and become famous in the science community. Well, James Watson and Francis Crick, these I'm calling them gentlemen, but they're not necessarily gentlemen. They kind of stole data and information um, from a lady named Rosalind Franklin. All right. Um, she had a lot of her data taken from them, and then they used her data along with theirs to come up with what DNA looks like, the structure of DNA. They got the credit for it, but in reality, um, Ms. Franklin was the one who came up with the main research that helped determine it. They were just manipulating the system at the time. So Watson and Crick were using their data along with other scientists' data, and they were, uh, especially Rosalind Franklin's data, and they used it and they ended up beating her to the punch, they ended up discovering um, the structure of DNA, but they used a lot of her data, which made it unfair. She did not get the credit while she was alive. She died, I believe, later of cancer. Um, the shape of DNA, it's called a double helix, okay? It's, that's like a spiral staircase, a double helix, all right? The outside, all right, the rungs, excuse me, the rungs of the ladder, so the parts of the ladder where you would step on, those are made out of the bases. And bases are connected together in a specific way. Gs always connect to Cs, and they do what's called a triple hydrogen bond. Gs and Cs always do a triple hydrogen bond, and they're always connected to each other. So Gs and Cs, always Cs to Gs or Gs to Cs. You have As and Ts in DNA. As are double hydrogen bonded to Ts. That shows you the two dots. So Ts and As always adenine and thymine, G and C, guanine and cytosine. So the sides of the ladder are made out of phosphates, sugar, phosphates, and sugar. They're made out of alternating sugars and phosphates. The rungs of the ladder are made out of the bases, as this picture shows you here. Now, you're going to see these fives and these threes, especially later on when we talk about DNA replication. All right. What do they mean? The five and the three correspond to the carbon on the sugar that is attaching to the phosphate. So right here, this point right here, 
where it says sugar is pointing right there, that's an oxygen atom. That's not a carbon. The first carbon atom is right there. That's carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five. So sugars are connected to phosphates at the fifth and the third carbon, always fifth and third, fifth and third. They're always connected at the fifth and third carbon. Why are the five, why is it called five prime or three prime? Well, that just shows you that this is the five side where the phosphate connects to the fifth carbon. And this is sort of the end of the molecule, you could say, where the three carbon is available to, to attach to something or to attach to a phosphate in this case. DNA always grows and is made in the five to three direction. Okay, so DNA is made from other DNA. And when it is made from other DNA, it always is produced five to three in that direction. That five, like I said, is the fifth carbon. And then it, it attaches from the fifth to the third, fifth to the third, fifth to the third, and so on and so forth. So when it grows or you, you create a chain of nucleotides, they always connect from the five to the three and they grow in that direction. These covalent bonds, excuse me, let's talk about the bonds that hold it all together. These hydrogen bonds are in the middle. Three hydrogen bonds holds G's and C's. Two hydrogen bond, bonds hold T's and A's. This is important. You're going to need to know this okay, for some assignments you have coming up. Um, what is holding the phosphate to the sugar? These are held together by covalent bonds. Covalent bonds are very, very strong bonds. Weak bonds, hydrogen bonds are very are weak, very weak in comparison to covalent bonds. All right. So these are held together by a weak bond. Why is DNA held together at a weak bond where the base is attached? Because DNA, this is the code. The bases are the code. And DNA is red, one side is red at a time. Okay, so DNA is red as a side. All right. So when you read the code, the DNA, you read in this case, all right, in this case, you would read the code. Let's just say we're going to read it in the direction that it grows. The, this, the right strand is CTC. That's the way the code is read. This strand would be GAG. All right. So they are read in opposite directions and they grow in opposite directions. That's kind of how DNA works. Um, why are the hydrogen bonds, these weak bonds important to have here? Because in order to read the code in DNA, you need to separate the bases from each other. If they were held together by a really strong bond, you would not be able to separate the code easily and you would not be able to read it when you needed it to be read. So these weak bonds holding together the bases allow it to be pulled apart. And when it's pulled apart, you can then read the code. All right. That's how DNA works. So the shape is called double helix, and it was discovered by these guys, Watson and Crick. DNA, we say, is two strands or double-stranded. You can see two sides. Okay, so this is it twisted up. This is the double helix. These are the two sides right here, showing you the two sides of the DNA, showing you the three prime end and the five prime end and the five prime end and the three prime They're opposite. So DNA grows and is produced in opposite directions. It's red in opposite directions. Like I said, you. what does that mean? That means that that term that refers to the opposite directions is called anti-parallel. So the strand over here, A, C, T, G, this one opposite, five to three goes in the opposite direction, C, A, G, T. So they're going to grow and they're going to be built in opposite directions. And they're going to be read in opposite directions. That's just how DNA works. And that term, once again, anti-parallel, double-stranded. Why is it important to know that DNA is double-stranded? Because RNA looks very similar to DNA, but RNA is not double-stranded. It is single-stranded. And we will talk about that in the next lecture.